you're going to be working with fuel here, so let's take some basic safety precautions. As always, you should be wearing safety glasses whenever you work on your vehicle, but now is a good time to put some gloves on to protect your skin. Work in a well-ventilated area without any form of open flame or heat nearby, including incandescent shop lights. If you smoke, now's a really good time to quit. But most importantly, have the proper type and rated fire extinguisher on hand and know how to use it. Pressure testing. Locate the fuel pressure test port at the right side of the fuel rail as indicated by the red arrow. Remove the fuel test port cap, red arrow. Connect a fuel pressure test gauge to the test port, red arrow. Next, start or attempt to start the engine. The fuel pressure should be 3.7 to 4.2 bar with the engine running or when cranking. Once you test the pressure, recharge the fuel system by cycling the key or running the fuel pump. Note the fuel pressure. Then turn the key off and allow the fuel system to sit under pressure for 30 minutes. It should hold a minimum of 2.5 bar. Electrical testing. Start at the left side seat cushion. In front of the cushion is a small plastic release lever. Pull the lever up to release the seat cushion latch. Fold the seat cushion forward. The left side is shown. Repeat this step for the right side. With the seat cushion folded forward, remove the carpet from below the seat. Pull it up at the corner to detach it from the clip, red arrow. The left side is shown. Repeat this step for the right side. Peel the carpet away from the body and support it out of your way. I have mine propped up with the steering wheel holder, red arrow. Even though the fuel pump is located on the right side of the fuel tank, the electrical connection is on the left side, green arrow. Remove the six 8mm access cover fasteners as indicated by the red arrows. Then lever the access cover up and remove it. Disconnect the fuel pump electrical connector by pressing the locking tab while pulling the connector off the fuel pump module. Connect a digital voltmeter across the fuel pump terminals. These are the two terminals on my subject vehicle. The red arrow points to the battery positive feed to the pump. The yellow arrow points to the battery negative feed to the pump. You will be testing the voltage across large wires at the connector. Turn the key on. The voltmeter should read battery volts around 12 volts. If no voltage is found, check the relay and the fuel pump fuse. With the key on, the fuel pump will receive voltage for 3 to 5 seconds to prime the system if the engine doesn't start. I suggest load testing using a test light and a voltmeter. Connect the voltmeter across the fuel pump electrical connector terminals and take a reading. It should read battery volts when the key is turned on. Then connect an incandescent bulb style test light to the battery ground and touch the test light probe tip to the positive wire you are back probing with the voltmeter. Your reading should hold steady. A maximum drop in voltage of 0.5 volts is okay. Anything more is a problem. In this photo, voltage held steady. If you have no voltage to the pump, see the following steps for checking the relay function. Working in the left side of the trunk, rotate the knobs, red arrow, 90 degrees counterclockwise, then open the access door. Remove the door from the carpet trim panel. Next to the CD changer, or the CD changer mounting spot, there is a rear electronic panel. Remove the plastic cover, red arrow, by pulling it straight off. Now you have access to the fuel pump fuse, yellow arrow, and the fuel pump relay, green arrow. First check that the relay has power with the key in the run position. You can also jump out your fuel pump relay to bypass it for testing. The vehicle used in this tech article was a 2004 E324 Matic sedan with a six-cylinder engine. The fuel pump relay position may vary depending on the year and model. Double-check your fuel pump relay location with the latest Mercedes-Benz repair information. 
Note, if one owns a W211 E55 AMG, this is not the fuel pump relay. It is the heat exchanger cooling pump relay. Remove the fuel pump relay. Connect a fused jumper wire between the terminals indicated by the red arrows. The insert photo shows the fused jumper in place. This will activate your fuel pump. Check for voltage at the fuel pump as you did earlier. Battery volt should be present. You can also check the relay circuit using a digital multimeter. Connect the black lead of your voltmeter to the battery negative and use the other lead to back probe the terminals. Use the following list to cross reference your voltage readings. Keep in mind that wire colors and positions may vary depending on the year and engine. What you see below is from my 2004 E320 4MATIC sedan with a six cylinder engine. Other readings should be similar red arrow, terminal 30. Constant battery power positive. Purple arrow. Terminal 86. Switched battery positive. Present when the key is in the on position. Blue arrow. Terminal 85. Is the DME relay control. Close to zero volts when the DME turns relay on. Red arrow. 87. Feed to the fuel pump. Battery positive when the relay is active. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.